in this video, I'm gonna show you how to actually mint tokens from a token that you've already created. This is a continuation of the previous video where I showed how to actually create a new token. This is actually how to mint them or issue them to your users. So let's go ahead and dive in. The thing to note here is we're using Gil, the new JavaScript client for the Solana blockchain. We're on version 0.4.0. And if you didn't already watch the previous video on how to actually create a token, definitely check that one out. It'll be linked up. Uh, script's also in the same repo, but we're gonna assume you already have a token with mint authority and the signer for that mint authority. So let's go ahead and dive in. Just like anything you're doing with the blockchain is you need a connection to the blockchain. So I'm gonna create a new connection to the RPC. I'm gonna create Solana client. Uh, in this example, I'm going to connect to a DevNet. You can do all the same stuff on any of the other networks. I'm going to grab the RPC and the send and confirm transaction. Next up, just like any other transaction, is we need to start building the transaction. And the first thing you need is a signer. So I'm going to load a local key pair signer from my file system. So I'm going to call load key pair signer from file. And uh, I'm gonna go kind of fast through all of this because I've covered all of this information in some of the previous videos. So if you haven't seen those, check out the, the Gil crash course video. But we have a signer and to show that this is also the same one that I'm using on my local file system, go ahead and log it out. And just for the sake of this, I'm also gonna use uh, ES run just like I've done in all the other previous videos. So I'm gonna run NPX ES run pass it in this script name, which is three mint tokens. And you can see we have this address. I can log out my CLI address as well. Same address, Nick6z. And uh, the reason I'm loading this address is because this particular address has DevNet Soul. We are on Solana DevNet here. I have DevNet Soul, that's the UD, that's URLD for DevNet. And I have DevNet Soul, so I can sign and send these transactions. So let's build our transaction. I'm going to create a new transaction object, call it TX, very common convention for creating transactions. And I'm going to call create transaction. I know it's, it's like rocket science. A lot of these names here, they're sort of set to help you figure out exactly what you're, what you're trying to do. So we're going to start passing in all of this information that we need in order to actually create our transaction. None of this is particularly special here. We have a signer, we have our fee payer, which is a signer. We're going to give this a legacy transaction version. We're not doing anything with address lookup tables, so we don't need a uh, version one transaction. And now we have a almost functioning transaction. A couple of things here. One is that we don't have a latest block hash. So if, if you went to actually sign this transaction, it would fail because you don't have a latest block hash. So that's sort of the recent timestamp check that the Solana blockchain needs in order to actually do a lot of the transaction stuff. So let's go ahead and ask the blockchain for our recent block hash, that recent timestamp. So we're gonna call our RPC, get latest block hash, gonna call dot send to actually fetch it. And we're gonna go ahead and destructure the returned value and give it a more helpful name, latest block hash. If I could spell. All right, so now we have this latest block hash. We'll go ahead and pass this into our transaction object as well. So we now have uh, a transaction that's just about ready to be sent to the blockchain, except it doesn't do anything yet. Let's go ahead and do something. So, so what are we doing here? We're minting tokens. So we already have an assumption here that we have a token already created. This um, from the previous video, if you check back into the Solana Explorer on DevNet here, we created this token called Super Sweet Token. It has a mint address of this HWZ or HWXZ. I'm gonna copy this address because we need to know the address that we're gonna mint tokens to. You can see here, our current supply is zero. We have not minted any tokens to this address, to this mint itself. So we have a, a supply of zero, we have no tokens. Let's mint some. So I'm gonna go ahead and store this mint as an address in my code here. Go ahead and import address, give it this. So now we have our, our mint address. Let's go ahead and build our instructions to actually mint these tokens. And the way that tokens work on Solana is a couple of very nuanced things. One is you have your mint itself. This is sort of, if you think of like a national currency, the US Treasury Department, in, in my case in the US, or you know whatever uh, 
institution is responsible for issuing currency from a, a country or a nation state, that's what we have. We have this mint already created. They have the ability to issue tokens to uh, citizens and, and holders of your token. And the way that holders and, and wallets and users will actually uh, own these tokens is called an associated token account. Basically, it's a way to link a user's wallet to the token mint itself using whichever token program they're using. So it's actually a PDA, program derived address, that's derived from the user's wallet, the token mint itself, and then the token program that the mint was created with. So we need to go ahead and create a user's ATA. And the user might already have an ATA, the associated token account already created. And you could fetch that from the blockchain and sort of check if they already have it. But there's actually a way better option is there's an instruction in the ATA program that will create a the associated token account. It's, a, it's called create associated token item potent. And basically what it does is it will create the user's ATA, the wallet's ATA, if it does not already have it. But if it does already have it, it just continues on. There's, it's sort of like a graceful failure. It just returns a success message. And this makes it so you can actually create a um, the token account in like the best possible way. So let's go ahead and create this. Create associated token account. There we go. Create get create associated token item potent instruction. That's the one we want. And again, it's it's this item potent instruction because it will create the account if it does not already exist. And if it does already exist, it will just continue on. So let's go ahead and start passing in all this information here. We need our mint, which we already know this uh, address up here. We need to know the owner. So this is going to be the actual uh, owner that's going to own these tokens. And this is sort of the, the address that we are issuing these tokens to. So we're going to issue them directly to my signer itself. So we're going to use the signer as the mint authority because it is the mint authority based off of the previous video. It's going to authorize minting of new tokens, issuing new tokens. It's going to issue these tokens to itself. Basically it's saying I own these tokens now. So I'm going to just mint them to myself. So that's going to be the owner here. The next is going to be our payer because the payer uh, needs to be a signer. Um, we're going to pass in our signer. It has uh, devnet soul in this case, that's able to mint these tokens. You need to know the token program that you used for the token mint itself. In the previous example, this mint that we created here uses the legacy token program. So we're going to pass that in. And then the last thing we need here is the ATA. This is going to be an address that we need to derive based off that information. So let's go ahead and create this. So const ATA equals await. We're going to get the associated token address. And you can see if we hover over here, we need to pass in a couple of pieces of information. We need the mint itself. We know that. We need to know the owner. So the actual owner of these tokens, in this case, my signer address, and then the token program itself. Um, you can see here in the notes, this will default to the legacy token program, but we'll be explicit. We'll go ahead and pass these in. So we're going to pass in the mint. The owner is going to be our signer and the token program is our token program. So we now have built our full transaction to, uh, well, we've created part of our transaction, our full instruction in order to create our ATA. So now that we create the ATA, we've allocated on chain, has all the correct values and settings, we need to actually issue tokens to this ATA. So how do we do that? We need to get the mint instruction, the mint two instruction, I should say. And we'll pass in the information here. And we can see if we hover over our, our type completion, uh, we can just start passing in all this information. We have the mint, we know that. The mint authority, this is our signer that needs to sign this transaction. Because again, when we created this mint, this signer is the mint authority. If you look back at our code here, um, this is the simplified version of it. Uh, the fee payer here is set to the, the authority. Next up is we need to know the token address itself. This is going to be our ATA. And then the amount. How many tokens do we want to actually issue to our user's wallet address, this signer.address? Well, you can issue however many you want. So you can issue um, 10 as your amount. You can do 100, 1,000 as your amount. It doesn't matter. The thing to note here is that this amount value, you need to take into account 
the decimal places of the token that was created. The token we created, I'll even put it here. The token that we created has decimals of nine. So if we were to issue mint to uh, use this mint to instruction to issue this amount, this would be, um, how many would this be? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is how many tokens we would actually mint to this user's wallet. Um, so you need to keep, keep that in mind of however many tokens you wanna actually issue. So we'll go ahead and mint a whole bunch of tokens. I'll throw some, a uh, little bit of pretty print in here. So we're gonna issue 100 million of our token, but our token has decimal places of nine. So we're actually only minting 1.0 of the tokens themselves, if that makes sense. So now that we have this, the last bit of information we need is we need to tell it which token program that we're going to use. We're gonna pass in our program address, token program. So we're gonna call our uh, item potent instruction here, create the ATA if the user does not already have it. We're gonna mint to that ATA and all of this is using the original legacy token program. So we have now successfully and completely built our transaction to actually mint tokens to this user's wallet. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and call this here just to clean this up a little bit, make this a little bit more clear that this is the address we're gonna mint to, this owner, because I'll show you how to actually change this to another address. Because right now, this signer is already signing this transaction. Uh, it doesn't need to sign this transaction if it's gonna be the destination for these tokens, because we're minting to this, this owner destination. It doesn't have to sign, it just happens to be in this case. So let's go ahead and actually sign the transaction. We're gonna call the sign transaction message with signers, give it our transaction, and we'll go ahead and grab this explorer link. This is actually all the same, so I'll just copy and paste this. I'm gonna take a shortcut. We'll get an import explorer link. We will get our transaction signature. So we're gonna log out this transaction. We sign the transaction because we have a fee payer. This fee payer also happens to be our mint authority, so they're gonna sign it here. We're gonna log out our Explorer link and then we're gonna send this transaction to the blockchain. So let's go ahead and do it. I will go ahead and clear my console. We're gonna run this uh, number three script again. So it goes through and it's done. We'll go ahead and switch over to the Explorer. We'll open this up and you can see we have signed it. We have our users to ATA was created, this CCMC. We have the mint, this HWX we can now see that we have minted 0.1 of our SST token, our super sweet token. We created the user's wallet address and because they didn't already have it. And then you can see this did some CPI calls to actually create the correct address for the user, the correct ATA. And then we called mint two and we minted 0.1 of our tokens. You can see all the logs and everything directly here on the Explorer and we're done, right? So we, we minted this token. Let's go ahead and refresh our tokens mint itself and you can see we now have our current supply has gone up by 0.1 because we minted 0.1 we issued 0.1 of our tokens to an address that's pretty cool so a couple things here one is this account this uh, ata was created automatically for the user phenomenal user experience that's like the gold standard of what how you should create tokens right or how you should mint tokens this consumed quite a bit of compute. You can see here, this was a, almost 28,000 CUs. Because we created the ATA, it didn't already exist. And we only minted 0.1 tokens. So let's uh, let's run this transaction again. We'll actually mint even more. We'll mint even more tokens. And that's all we're gonna change. We're gonna just mint more tokens. We'll run this exact same transaction again, or the exact same script, get a different transaction goes through and you can see here our compute units have gone down substantially because this item potent instruction it didn't have to execute a bunch of logic so it didn't have to do a bunch of computation on chain because the ata already exists we've now minted an additional 1.1 of our tokens and it's much more efficient of a transaction and if we go back to our mint again we can refresh and now we have 1.1 of our token actually created 
and we can keep running this script as, as much as we want. Uh, and it's just gonna keep doing the exact same thing, creating a transaction and minting tokens. So that's that's how simple it is. But it's, it's kind of complicated here, right? Like we're minting tokens. This is fairly complicated. There's a lot of stuff in here. We can change this address if we want to change the address of, of where we want to mint these tokens to. So I'll go ahead and grab a different address to also show this. We will mint to a different address or different owner. And so we're going to mint to this Nick TR. And if you notice that my signer is Nick 6Z, I have a bunch of vanity addresses because uh, I'm a nerd. And so Nick 6Z is our signer. Nick TR is going to be the owner. We can run this transaction again. It's gonna go through pretty similar as before. Pull this over, open up in the wrong tab. And the transaction goes through. We created the new ATA for Nick TR because it did not exist. Nick 6Z paid for the transaction itself for the account creation. And now all of these wallet addresses have more tokens. So now there's two holders of our tokens. See here, if we go to the transfers, we don't have any transfers. We can see our metadata here of the information that we've posted about this token. And there we go, we've now minted tokens. But this uh, this does look a little complicated, right? So we can actually simplify this with the use of Gil's transaction builders. So Gil ships transaction builders for a bunch of common functionality. So I'm gonna create a new transaction and I'm gonna use the transaction builder. So we're gonna simplify this. This is, how many lines of code is this? This is. Uh, 68 lines of code with uh, prettier to make it print. Got a bunch of imports up here. We're gonna simplify this a whole bunch and we're gonna call the build mint token transaction. And uh, much like we did at the very end of the last video, we're gonna start passing in all this information for this transaction itself. We'll grab uh, sort of the, the base transaction information and we're gonna say the amount is again, we'll do, uh, was it 1 billion? So that's how many tokens we're gonna to mint. The destination is gonna be our owner. The mint, we're gonna pass that in. The mint authority is our signer. And there we go. This is the exact same functionality we just did. So we'll go ahead and delete this, delete that, or rename that. We can delete this. And now we can remove these imports, remove this import. And now we're down to 44 lines of code and it's a lot easier to read. We are minting tokens from our signer. Our mint authority signs it, pays the transaction fee, and we send it to the blockchain. We can run the script again. Go ahead and open this up on the Explorer. Transactions going through. It's still confirming because Solana's that fast. We have minted more tokens to this same exact address, the Nick TR. We now own two SST tokens. And if we go back to our mint, go back to our mint overview, refresh the page. And just like you would expect, we now have our information displayed. Our, our supply has gone up. And that's how simple it can be to actually create a token and how to mint tokens to another wallet address. But what if you already have tokens minted and you're not the mint authority? Maybe you just own some of these tokens. How do you actually transfer them to another address? Well, I'm gonna save that for the next video. So go ahead and jump over to that one and we'll talk about transferring tokens.